the network. That much outside of shows? Because I know you said you send a, something a week, one text a week. We do a text blast once a week uh, to everyone on our list. And we do we do two things with text like basically we do that one text blast so there's like we think about it as like some like one text blast a week from us to them and then like we also give them an opportunity once a week to text us i mean obviously if they just randomly text us we're going to text them but like scheduling wise we also have this thing called oh you you're gonna die it's called corn hub <laughs> it's, it's been... <laughs> <laughs> he's like yo i can't take y'all right <laughs> it's, it's not what you think it is all right <laughs> the whole idea is we beat it up in front of you but not it's not what you think it's basically we make we make <laughs> we wait, 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 let us explain let we'll us explain, explain. We'll, i promise it'll make sense context it's all about context, context man. <laughs> we make we make a beat on ig live in 15 minutes but we make a beat using rules that our fans text us so a fan might be like yo <clears throat> I want you to like sample a Star Wars like theme song or something like that. And there's three rules. And basically we give them the opportunity to text us as well. And so there's two like basically te like larger text touch points per week is that's one. And then we do like a general text blast on the Saturdays as well, which they, it, it tends to, it's not always like, yo, we have a new song that's dropped. Like sometimes it'll be yeah, like, yo, we don't want to ask too much either. Right. Mm -hmm. So about, again, it just comes down to like delivering some sort of value. Um, yeah whether that's as simple as like, hey, what are you guys listening to this week? This is what we've been listening to this week, or this is what's on our playlist. Um, and it's like, it's about like, not always just pushing your own music, but like also just like- Nurturing. Yeah. Yeah. Just building those relationships really. Yeah. Um, I mean, cause now you guys have the opportunity to put them on to some music they haven't heard before. And then that's well, exactly. the wrong thing to remember. Right. Exactly. And, and it feels, it, it doesn't feel transactional, right? Because, and I think because of the natural, the other thing is like for us, like that's dope. Like the fact yeah. that we get to like our fans are our friends and we get to like have genuine conversations with them. That's dope. Like maybe for a lot of artists, like that doesn't feel genuine. Like I see a lot of like larger artists who are like, text me now. And it's like sort of just like a bot texting back for us. It's not really about that. Like we, we like having genuine interactions and conversations with our fans as it gets bigger, obviously it'll be harder, yeah, but right now we can. At that point you got to scale. But like, again, like, I guess the theme of like a lot of what we're talking about today is just when you're at a smaller level, it's a, a lot of it comes down to just doing things that don't scale. Right. Just finding those creative ways to personalize. Yeah. yeah. What tech software do you guys use? Superphone. Cool. Yeah. And Hmm. And you guys wouldn't say it's expensive for y'all. I mean, I know you guys aren't like, I know you guys aren't way up here as artists, right? Financially. And yeah. I know you guys probably aren't the, the, you know, just on the streets as well. Yeah. But just generally speaking for you, based on a typical artist budget, all the things you guys have to pay for the, the, obviously I, I think you guys think it's worth it um, based on how y'all use it. Cause you have to let you leverage, but do, would you call it, would you say it's generally expensive for you? It's, it's variable, right? Like it's like, as it scales, it's going to get more expensive, but as it scales, you have the more opportunity to sell like merch to more customers. So it just like makes sense, like from a standpoint of like scaling for us, it's like, if you can't afford to like take like, let's say $50 a month out of your like uh, Facebook ads budget or something else to have this deep level of connection with your fans, then it probably isn't right for you, you know, because for me, it's like, it's much more effective than like nurturing through like retargeting on Facebook because it's like you have a direct line with these fans. Like the private yeah. channel is just so effective. And so for us, it's like, it's a no brainer. Like it can run like, uh, yeah, it can run like 50 bucks a month sometimes, but it's, it's totally. It's I also think. about like just owning the means of communication, right? That's something a lot yeah. of our managers actually just like just talk to us about. And like, he'd always be like, you know, like Facebook could shut down, Instagram could shut down, but like it's when you have, when you go through text or email, it's like th those things are going to last, you know what I mean? So it's like, no matter what you have that information to like, even if something else shuts down, you have the, that direct to consumer. Yeah. Um, like that's Ryan Leslie's whole philosophy as a founder, right? Is like data ownership. And yeah. That's, that's like just so important to us. It's like, it might not be leading to like um, likes or any type of public validation, but it's something much stronger, which is just like individual one-to-one sort of um, relationship building with their fans. But yeah, no, I wouldn't say it's expensive. Like from my perspective, like 50 bucks a month max, like right now at our scale with like 200 numbers. Um, yeah. Got you. Okay. Well, I want to go back for a second to 
your yeah. corn hub situation. <laughs> All right. <laughs> give me an idea of like paint the picture a little bit more in terms right. of what you guys exactly are doing. That whole the beat and the fans can actually text you. How do you even prime them and let them know, hey, you can text me during this time? Because to me, it sounds like you're saying, hey, you, I ha you have my text message, but don't come texting me anytime just about random stuff. Uh, you guys have figured out a way to control it. Um, I'm sure they do text you random stuff at times, but it sounds like you guys are creating a way where you, you want to allow them feel, to feel like they can text something and there's a useful for a two-way conversation, mm -hmm. but you don't want it to be completely open where it's right. completely informal. Um, like honestly at the scale we're at, we're, we're okay with it being completely open just to clear that up. Like if, if our fans like text us out of nowhere, like we're totally fine having a conversation with them. I, I guess I met more so met like formally, like the formal touch points are like twice a week, like with the uh, once, like with the corn hub stuff on Thursdays and then the, um, Saturday, like text blast. Um, like what we do is we'll go on Instagram stories and, uh, we've started to try and experiment with TikTok, but that's a bit harder because like you're getting people for the most part, you're getting people who aren't as nurtured, but like mainly like Instagram stories and be like, yo, this is our, this is our number right here. Like text us a rule and you have the chance for this rule to be picked. We're picking three random rules this week. Um, these are some examples of like fans who have like actually got the rule picked last week and they're hella excited, just sort of showing that like social proof that it is possible. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then from there, like people are usually like just happy to text in and be a part of the creative process. Nope. So and you guys will say, since you really focus on this part of strategy, because you know, obviously you've tried a lot of other tactics, right? But when you talk about the show strategy and then adding in SMS, how long have you been working that to get from zero to nurtured list and a 250 people show that's based all on you guys? And is that still a $10? Sorry, is that still a what? At $10. A no, oh, no, so that's a good point. No, so the first show is ten dollars. The second show is fifteen. This this show is twenty two dollars per ticket. Twenty two dollars and two hundred fifty people. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. I love dude, it. dude, making <laughs> for us to like have that little bit of gratification, like side point for us, because we lost money on the first two shows because of the venue and everything it was just so DIY. But like for us to like go into that third show and be like, fuck, like we walked away with money regardless of how much money it is, even if it's equivalent to like one or two paychecks, my old job, like amazing feeling. Yeah. And that, that as an artist that can keep you going for like an entire year, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I get it. Like look 50, what 22, you said 22 times 250, 5,500. Right. Yeah. And that's far more than the nothing that so many people make just oh, to get exactly. the show. Right. Let alone, to be able to do that alone that's a strong number and i know you're now at the point well you probably did this when you made twenty dollars and fifty dollars but now you see five thousand five hundred holy shit if i double this yeah right and i keep and hope exactly. I this, right <laughs> you, you already have a system that's what i like what you got what you guys are doing and i try to explain to people right it's just, just getting these random results they're cool but you guys have a level of certainty where you just say, okay, when are we going to do it again versus what do I do? How did I do what I did? All right. So it's, it's yeah. a really cool space to be in. I want to, before we move on. It's the network.